they're using it as an excuse and then that's a major uh, strategic uh, uh, trick that the, the government is using here to make us think the way they want us to think so they said oh the, the security situation of the Israelis is so bad and we have so many problems on the borders and with Palestinians does it look to you that we have a problem? I mean, look, we're sitting here on the grass, having fun, drinking lemonade, talking. I mean, does it look to you that we are in a war or anything? Yes, there are problems. In every country, there are some problems. In England, they have no problems with uh, uh, immigrants. And then in, in the United States, they have a problem with the new president to be elected. And everywhere there is a problem. So you cope Why with is problems. Why so special? Right. Israel is no different than the others. But the people outside me think that um, Israel's a sacred cow that can't be talked about. Uh, which is a major stupid thing to say because uh, there are no secret, uh, secret cows anywhere, not even in India. <laughs> uh, well, they are quite sacred in India, actually. The cows. They, they, they treat, they treat them nice. I treat my dogs the same way, so... You can't eat cows in India, technically speaking. I'm not eating dogs in Israel either. <laughs> the Chinese. So, 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 I mean, what, what, what's the difference? It's, it's no different. No. These are excuses. The, Huge the, excuses. The, you can look on the, on the Russian regime at the time the communists came up. What was the, their main strategic? To control the crowd. Yeah. To control the crowd. Look what Erdogan did last week. Mm -hmm. He exactly. controlled the crowd. He called them to go out on the street and stop the soldiers that were rioting against him instead of him coming out and fighting. So he sent somebody else to go to die for him. That, that's the trick. You control the crowd. The crowd is doing the, the dirty job for you. That's it. And this is what Bibi is doing now in Israel too. It's not only Bibi. I mean, Bibi is now the head of the government, so... We can pinpoint at him, but it's not him. It's a system. It's a well-known, look on the history of, of the world for the last, I don't know, two, three hundred years. It's the same story again and again and again and again. Control the crowd and you can do anything you want. You know, um, you have excuse for anything you, you want. Gary shared the post about the UN because it was a, the anniversary of the third visit. Mm -hmm. And some guy wrote and said, <coughs> This is the wrong place to go. Uh, all our enemies are going to find out that you know we don't want our enemies to know what's going on in here. There should be somewhere else to go. So my question back to him was, well, where should they go then? There's no ombudsman. Uh, Israelis are going to the States, the ICC. They're not getting any help, mind. The Hague, the UN. Uh, petitions galore. Um, there's no due process. There's no remedies. So tell me, 5,000 men have died. That makes at least five to 10,000 children with no dad. Mm -hmm. You tell me, are they supposed to die in silence for your Hasbara and PR to make Israel look like the perfect place that everyone should live? Right. Why should Israelis pay the price for the dream of the people who don't bloody live here? All the Jews outside can't hear this stuff. No, 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 you're lying. You're demonizing these problems aren't real and even um, Gil criticized I, I don't something. know why you're going to argument with these guys all the time the, the, you should answer them in a most simple way and tell them, them you die. don't believe me come over here and see for yourself well this particular guy lives in Israel and he said I think that we should fight from the inside and I went well on you go then Go ahead. I'll, 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 Go ahead. I'll wait to see you in yeah. Rothschild or I'll wait yeah. to see you in the next yeah. protest. Gil had a problem with the video that I shared and it wasn't, I, I, I held the camera, right? And there's a really, his name's Ilian Marek or something like that. Um, and he made a great speech, you know, to the to the uh, people in the cafe saying one more coffee is not going to help you. And it's not about Arabs and Palestinians, it's about the thieving, rotten core shit that we've got here. And he did it in Hebrew and English and he wrote and said, um, are you trying to start a revolution and bring the Islamic people in to ru rule us? We have the outer brain. The one who is interfacing us to the world is in charge of our sight, of our hearing, of our ability to speak, etc., etc., etc. He is doing the front processing, like computer doing the front processing, and got the short-term memory as well. Okay, 
then there is the major part of the brain inside that part which is our bank memory this is where the back processing is done this is where where, where our dreams are coming from etc 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 and then there is the very inner brain the one connected to our spine and he's he's in charge of our survival like for example if a snake will be crawling now next to your feet you will probably jump on the on the chair right <laughs> This is a natural. I'll be jumping on you, on <laughs> you jumping on the chair. <laughs> the, the, this is a natural uh, reaction of the inner uh, brain. By the way, this is the only uh, uh, brain common to us and animals. Okay, and it's a prehistorical. Uh, you can see it in prehistorical animals. They also have that that kind of brain. This is in charge of our survival. He is making our our hearts tick and our blood go through the veins and that we can breathe and all the basic things of life are controlled by that brain now the thing is it's a fantastic uh, machine of course I mean uh, we see how it works but the thing is the inner brain has a major problem it is covered by two layers above him so actually he is isolated from the outer world for him if it's a day or night or today or 10 years ago or whatever he doesn't know anything about it so what happens is that when he gets into action like for example if you put your finger into fire you pull your hand immediately this is uh, something done by the inner brain his reactions are not connected to the real world because he does he's covered he's isolated from the real world now, as long as you're doing simple things like pulling your finger from the fire no problem with that but when when you go into situations like what happened to divorced men in Israel where they actually stab you with a knife straight into the inner brain from day one you go into 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 a divorce process you go you go into an extreme trauma which puts you into uh, a survival mode of operation forever forever this is something that you cannot repair afterwards no psycho no 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 psychiatrist or psychologist it's can treat that hit. it's not a one off hit it's not the one stat it's a permanent it's a permanent PTSD damage and you can see it yeah and, and you can see it and not only there you can see it also you know we have uh, what they call uh, war trauma soldiers that were under fire and were about to die and survived somehow they also suffer from the same trauma PTSD. what happens is there is no way for normal people to explain why does it happen not only that why does it happen you cannot live with that you see a person which is hurt by that trauma and you cannot understand why he's doing things like for example we have a common friend uh, Ariel, oh, bless his heart. He's, now, he's, a, he's a, a, an extremely nice guy, a really good heart. It's like a teddy bear. He's okay? a big, big, a big teddy bear, bear. and then, and he's, he's a nice guy, very smart, very everything. But he's doing things that I mean, you look at him and you say, God, what did you have in in your head when you did that? <laughs> Like, like the story you went to Berlin uh, a few months ago. To ask for political asylum with the Syrians. He actually believed when he told them all in Germany yeah, he said what was happening to the uh, fathers and the children of Israel. He, you know, because I've been writing, you know, for years and years, and uh -huh. and uh, there are a lot of people, millions more people that believe than didn't, but they still don't really want to hear it. And um, he got there and thought, if I tell the Germans about the, the human rights abuse in Israel, they'll just rescue me and they'll come and get uh -huh. Abraham. They'll bail him out and we'll all live happily ever after. And he had to stand in line with the Syrians you know sorry but and they yeah. looked at him as if he was mental because he mind you that's what happens the I same mean, when way, you yeah. look at um, those people you look at them as if they were mental and, and in a way they are in a way they are mental but they're telling the truth okay but but it doesn't mean that what they they say what they tell you the stories they tell you are not true and this I call it the killing machine it's a machine that was built in Israel in the last 70 80 years mainly the main contributor to that machine was the the uh, uh, women's organizations 
fighting for 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 Such women's rights, which is the worst case, which is the worst. Vito, of course, the biggest one. Vito is the 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 biggest problem. I'll tell you a few stories about things they they're doing. You wouldn't believe it. By the way, Vito was heavily involved in this. We were just talking about the kidnapping of the Yemenite kids. Vito was heavily involved in that. There are papers showing it. Okay, just on that subject, and Uzi Mashulam. He was a big fighter for the Yemenite case to be open, wasn't he? Mm -hmm. And he, there was a big shootout and it was all very CG and everything. Mm -hmm. He went to jail, didn't he? There's a lot yes. of people say he was killed in there. Or he didn't well, he was in, in, in bad health anyway. Um, so, but uh, his son's back in town, did you know? Yeah, his son's yeah, back in yeah, town. And he's trying to start the, the, the whole thing again, yes. What do you think is going to happen with him? Uh, they will probably shoot him down like they do to the, the major activists. Separate and conquer. Divide and conquer. Divide and conquer. Yeah. This is what they do. And this is supported by the government because the government find it much easier to control the people here because they are poor, they don't have the power to raise and, and to raise up and, and fight. Sure. They are doing it to the men, the best fighters of Israel, they're doing it to the men in the divorce process. Okay? Every point of of power that they can see, they dis dismantle it to parts, to pieces, simply by crashing it. Okay? So Vito. And that's the way they control things here. Vito. A man in Israel going into the divorce process, okay? And you have two examples right here in front of you. They are crashed on the first day. On the first day, the, the wife is going to the police station. This is instructed by uh, the social workers that were educated by Vito, by the way, another story, uh, by the lawyers, which are making a lot of money on it, and so many other people who are gaining something out of it. She's going to the police. She is placing a false complaint that her husband abused her this way or another immediately. A police car goes to the house, put chains on his hands, take him out, that's it. End of story. Beginning of night. You don't have your home at all at, uh, anymore. You don't see your kids anymore. Say goodbye to your life savings and, and, and uh, job. your job and everything. I mean, it's end of it. I remember, it, it's also, you can see it also in a, in a movie that was made on this. I remember myself walking at two o'clock after midnight from the Kfar Saba police station. It was a rainy day, rainy night late, <laughs> to be exact, more accurate. There was n no dog on the street. Nobody was there. I was looking at the world and all of a sudden it disappeared. There was just darkness. There was nothing there. I looked down to see if I'm still standing up on real earth or I'm I'm in the air. They simply take your word away from you on the spot. You know something I remember really. And then they the start and then they start telling you now you prove that you're a good father and now you have to prove that you can support your family. Now you have to do this, now you have to do that. Who the fuck are you to tell me what I need to do or not? Did you say anything when I married that woman or when I made children with her? How comes now that I'm in, in trouble, you interfering in my life and start controlling them? This is the key to the whole thing. That's the way they, they start controlling you. Do you know, Neve, Elon said to me once, he said, there's a moment when I wake up, he told me, for about, you know, those few seconds when you're not sure where you are. And he said, and in that moment, it was like, I thought I was a person. And he said, and then when I actually wake up, it's darker than the night I was asleep in. And then all I do is go through that whole day of darkness, hoping that sleep will take me. So I get that one minute in between that makes me feel normal. And when he told me that, it made me want to cry. Mm -hmm. And he said, it's darker than the darkness you can imagine. And it's only a minute a day that I actually feel like I'm not a dead person. Um, and it just hurt me so much to hear it, you know, and what you've just said about everything so dark. Um, and I hear it from people, even, you know, mothers and, you know, you know decent ones, because there are decent, mm -hmm. loads of decent mothers who've lost their children as well. Um, you know, they're not all uh, bad. It's the darkness 
and everybody I've met, do you know what they tell me? I'm already dead, you can't kill me twice. Yeah. Now, when you hear people walking around the country I used to I'm say dead. that uh, more than 10 years ago, at the beginning of my, uh, my personal struggle in the divorce, you killed me already. I said, I said to the judge, I said, what can you do to me now? You killed me already. You, you killed me already. I'm dead already. You can't do anything now anymore. Do whatever you say. Decide whatever you want. I don't give a shit. I don't give a shit. Because you killed me already. Why don't they so make any decision you wish. I walked out. I stood up in the middle of a, a, a court session. I stood up and I said to her, bye bye. I'm going. And I went out. I said, there is nothing for me here. You go continue your, your games and I, I'm not going to participate in your games anymore. Did you miss yourself for a long time? Did you miss yourself? Uh, I still do. Yeah? <laughs> in most of the time, I still do. Yeah. Because like that life, you know, chief exec and running around and a life and kids and, you know, the normal stuff that we all think we have. Lucky for me about uh, 20, 25 years ago, I went through a psychological uh, treatment voluntarily because I felt that my life is going in the wrong direction and so I went and lucky for me I found probably the best psychologist in Israel, her name is um, Dr. Nira Kfir. She's a very, very, very special uh, person and an uh, extremely good psychologist. I was there for about two years under treatment and that turn changed my life uh, in a very significant way. One of the, the most no noticeable items that was changed is the way I look at things. Nowadays I'm far more aware of what's going on around me I'm far better attached to the reality so ca I can see what's going on I can interpret it properly I can understand what is coming up next I can guess smart guess what is coming up next this is why I didn't lose my mind throughout this process yeah. which does not happen to most people that's true because they're, they're not prepared for it that's right so this is probably why I'm one of the very few people that remain normal. Uh, right. Even even uh, even even though they went through this hell, I call it a, a killing machine. It, it's it's a talk machine about, that crushes talk about you. Pizza because they are so powerful. It's it beggars belief. I mean, Vito, Vito started about 80 years ago when Henrietta Sold uh, came from the United States, immigrated from the United States to Israel, and she brought that uh, story about feminism, which nobody knew about it in Israel at the time, and she started this organization. Now, at the beginning, it was a good organization with good causes and good deeds, and it was good. Yes, it was taking care of women. Women does need to be taken care of. There are a lot of things that need to be done for women, especially at that time, which they didn't have equal rights, etc., etc., etc. It's very good. But, like it happens in every social revolution in the world, and you can examine all social revolutions throughout the last 200 years, and you see it's the same thing again and again and again. On that good cause, on that good thing that the whole thing started, a lot of... Uh, Leeches. A lot of leeches climb and start sucking blood out of that cause. Start making living out of that cause. Now once you start making living on that cause, you have to justify what you, you're doing. And how do you justify it? I mean, okay, women's did, women did not have um, uh, social rights. Right. It's not true anymore. I mean, for, for the last 10 years, I think uh, women in Israel have more rights than men, okay? But still they claim that women, uh, we still need to fight for women's rights in Israel because they, they are not equal. So what they do, they build stories to make you think that yes, women are not having the same kind of uh, social uh, uh, rights like men. That causes 
fights that causes gender fights and for what reason I mean it's not a true story but this story is what provides them with the check at the end of the month so they have to go with this story again and again and again like for example let me give you the, the probably the most significant example is the fact that um, the old Israeli law uh, regarding children of divorced uh, couples is that if the children were up to the age of six they automatically go to the mother even if she's not fit for purpose by the way nobody checks if, if she fits or not nobody bothered to check if she, she, she fits be, or she not she could be a child beater yeah. she could be a drug addict but yeah. she automatically now th this law was made something like 50 years ago okay when women did stay at home and did take care of the family at home, didn't go out and make a career or whatever. Nowadays, it's not true. Women are, women are holding the highest positions in Israel, in the army, in the police, in the banks, everywhere, in the government, in the Knesset, everywhere. Okay? They're working just like men. In many cases, they earn much more than men. Okay? Now Israel's the only country with this law still intact. Yeah, and, and, and the law is still... Now they're trying, after 15 years that we're fighting on this, they're trying now to, to uh, actually delete that part of the law so that it will not be automatically that kids will go to their mother un until the age of six. Who is the, the, the body that fights against it more than anyone else? Women's, women's organizations. They were cheering in the case. No, instead, they? yeah, the, the, they there is this piece vote, of movie. Were, I mean, you should give well, him this piece of the movie to show them how they are shameful. dancing in the Knesset. They were dancing, literally dancing, dancing. in the Knesset. That men didn't get that men didn't get that correction of the law. Okay, Fast. now this is one of the most irreasonable thing in the world. If you give kids to the woman, that means you are actually arresting her in the square meter before uh, before the sink in the kitchen. <laughs> she will never be able to go to study something, a profession or anything. She will never be able to go out and have fun with friends. She will never be able to find a new uh, mate to live with. She will never be able to do anything. She is arrested there because she has to take care of the, of the kids. Okay? Even if she gets a lot of money, let's just say, okay, she's getting a lot of money. Even then, she is arrested in that square meter in front of the sink. Okay? You, women organization, are fighting for the liberation of women. And you are arresting her on that square meter in front of the sink? I mean, it doesn't make sense. It's the most unreasonable thing you can think of. You should be the first one to support that law to free women. Nobody, nobody in Israel ask the kids what they want. What do they want? And when they do, nobody they get, care about they the get kid. Ignored, they all actually. talk about the kid. They all talk about the rights of the kid, the good of the kid, everything. They all talk about it. Nobody really mean it. No, they don't. They don't ask the kids where do you want to live. They don't ask the kid uh, uh, how do you want things done so that you feel more comfortable. We know your house was wrecked and, and now you have to find yourself in a new world. We're trying to make it easier for you. To, we're trying to, you know, give you the best solution possible in this situation. Nobody bothered to ask them. Actually, They're making decisions on their this. back. I must say this to you though, Neve. I, I know a dad um, who's the, the, the mother of literally just walked out and she was an alcoholic. She didn't want them. Um, she made all sorts of false claims. She beat herself up, you know, and she walked for two years and, and then she came back. Uh, I want to see the kids. Um, now the man brought the children up for two years solid. She came back and claimed Mezzanot and he had to pay her. Even though the children were with him, he still had to pay child support suddenly to her. Mm -hmm. She then starts to do the usual tricks, the outside of pole and knocking on the door and you're not a good dad. Now the social workers told him that he couldn't get a job because if he, could, if he took a job looking after two children, he'd be an unfit father and therefore he'd lose his children. She could have a job if she had them, but he couldn't. He was then, then he couldn't, supply enough food and shelter for them so that made him a bad father too 
um, she, the judge actually saw the children, um, you know, in a, in a separate room. Both the boys said, we don't want to see her. We want to be with our dad. And he said, there's something wrong with those children. They need a psychiatric assessment. It can't be normal. Now, this woman had the police on him. When she finally was allowed to see the children, and I was there when it happened, by the way, she locked them in the bedroom and they climbed out the window and ran back to their dad. And the police came and dragged the children back to be visiting their mother, who they hadn't set eyes on for two years, who was a raging alcoholic and aggressive. But because it's not normal, to want to be with your father in this country, by the way, I mean, you know, then the psychology is, even if she beats the hell out of you, this is more normal for a child to want to be there than to want to be with a dad who's really kind to them. Yeah. This is what fathers are struggling with. And I see it all the time. Some dads are just so amazing, well, loads of them. And they don't get a chance to hug and kiss them and take them out and buy God aspirin. created us, men and women, so that together we can build the future by making new generations. No woman can make kids by her, on herself. No man can do it. There is a reason why God created us different from each other, at least physically. I'm not talking about the mental thing because this is known accurate science, okay? But physically we're different for a purpose. Mm -hmm. That only together we can make these new generations, these new kids, and raise, them and raise them afterwards. It's an amazing story. I've probably never heard anything like this in Israel. And I remember that. I, I remember those two nights with the judge. I, I can take you today to that same coffee shop where it was and show you the chair we were sitting on. Okay? It was that important in my life. Today, they don't. not only they don't do it, they don't do it on purpose. I had a judge, one of the worst known judges in Israel for family affairs, Rivka Mikhaes. At some point in time we came in court during the, the session, we came to the conclusion that the judge need to hear the kids, need to understand what is it that the kid really want, because the mother said something, I said something else, the lawyer said something else, her lawyer said something else, the social worker had a totally different other story, so he said, bring in the kids and let's hear them. Let's hear what do they want, okay? The judge, the judge said, no, I don't want to hear the kids. I don't want to hear the kids. I'm not, I'm not abide by the law to hear the kids and I'm not going to listen to what they have to say. She's, she's making decisions on their life without even listening to them. Okay, they were young, but you know, even young people, even young kids, they have an opinion, they know something. It's more of God's feeling than, than uh, something you learn with your life experience, but they still know what they want. Animals can tell the difference between good and bad people. Right. Children have the same instinct. Right. Uh, because and they haven't been trained out of it. You know? right. And if this situation is so widespread, then why uh, Israel doesn't take the, um, action on the wider scale? Why they are like uh, they are afraid they because, will not... Because it serves the purpose of uh, separate and con conquer, uh, how divide, does and conquer. divide and conquer. Aye. Because if it makes him miserable and me miserable and so many other miserable, we will not get up, we will not raise and and uh, kick, knock down the Bastilla. It's very simple. But there's so much money to be made, Nick. I mean, Look, one of the like smartest that. guys in Israel, okay? I know him a little bit professionally. He's a real smart guy, okay? Same goes for me, okay? The two of us could probably build a revolution here and really wreck down all this evilness. We can't move. We don't have the energy to move. They, they completely smashed us. So we cannot do anything. We are trying, you, you see us, we are trying. With the little energy left in us, we are still trying to do something. Now, crashing down, this crashing down is basically the biggest abuse of human rights. Not just children's rights, human rights all together. And I'm talking about children, and I'm talking about men, and I'm talking about women. Everybody here in Israel is crashed down by the system. 
In, in, in the United States, I, I lived for a few years in the United States. In the United States, they have what they call the Chapter 11. If somebody, or a company or a person is going into a, a major debt situation, it happens sometimes. You can't help it, okay? What they're trying to do, they're trying to help you out of it. So they uh, they get some professional guys like an accountant and a lawyer that uh, is working with you trying to find ways to get you out of there. They they delete some of the of the of the uh, amounts of money in there as much as possible. They delete it so that you won't have to pay it back uh, to make it easier on you. They uh, divided they divide your debt into uh, so many payments so that you can survive. You can still eat and rent an apartment. And, and pay your debts. They're doing anything possible to get you out of that situation. In Israel, they do exactly the opposite. You're in debt? Oh, great! Let's put you even deeper! Yeah, it's even deeper! In, it is probably much fun oh, to be deeper in that shit. Those debts are coming again from very old law, which again does not belong to our days. In our days, the woman can earn 200,000 shekels a month net. The husband is earning hardly 20,000 shekels a month net. Still, he need to pay her child support. She doesn't have to support the kids, even though she is earning 10 times as much as he does. And they will arrest him on that. And they will take his driving license away. And they will block his bank account. And look at me. Look, look where I live. In the old days, I, I wouldn't give my dog a place like this to live in. I was a vice president of an American company, international marketing of an American company. Okay? I was living in heaven. Look where it got me. I wouldn't give this place to my dog to live in. Okay? And, and this is a perfect example. It's not only me. All of us are in this situation. Oh, most of us are in this situation. Some of us find some arrangement to go back to live with their parents. Lucky for them, they get, uh, I don't know, some money somewhere and, and get themselves a small place to live in. But most of us are living like dogs. I lived six months on the street, homeless. Brushing my tooth in the, in the pipe where you water the, the grass. And for what reason? I was the best soldier in the world. I was a pilot in the Israeli Air Force. I, I was a high-tech guy, an engineer. I brought millions of dollars to Israel. I brought the best high-tech companies to Israel. I participated, participated in the most important projects that went in Israel ever, okay? I'm a contributor to this country. I shed my blood and tears and sweat on this country. Why do I deserve this? What did I do wrong to get this? Nothing. I just got divorced. That, that's it. I got divorced. I fell into this killing machine. Great. Do you remember Indiana Jones movie series? There was this movie that was, he was in India and he's going to a mine under a building. Where, where they have a, a lot of kids working hard, uh, breaking rocks and things like this. If you remember there, there was this machine with this huge two wheels that was crashing the, the stones. And at some point in time, he threw one of the guards into those and you see the guard being crashed and blood all over, etc. This is exactly what happens to an Israeli father in Israel once it, his wife decided that he wants to get it, she wants to get a divorce. And the thing is that the whole system is encouraging her to get a divorce. So the kid's name end up without dads because a lot of dads are dying. Yeah. A lot of dads are dying. Are you aware of the statistics of uh, men killing themselves in Israel? Mm, 5,000? 500, uh, 400 uh, a year annual for the last 15 years or so. It's about 400 a year. Out of them, somewhere between 150 to 200 are divorced men. Nobody pays attention to this. She was the only person that brought this issue to the United Nations uh, Committee in, in Geneva. And, and what is his name? Uh, Dr. Uh, he called the Israeli delegation to, to that uh, committee. And he said to them, look, I heard this story. 
that uh, almost half of the suicidal uh, people in Israel are divorced men. I want an official answer from the Israeli government if this is true or not. They went and, and he said to them, from what I know, he said to them, you're not coming back to this uh, session until I get an answer from the Israeli, official answer from the Israeli government. They, they came back with a, an official answer. 150 right out here. of 400, I have it in written. It right was here. announced by that committee. There was a press release on that. I have the press release. 150 men out of 400 total that suicidal only that, only that year are divorced men. Doesn't it ring, ring a bell to you? 150 out of 400, almost half of the suicidal people in the whole country of all genders, of all colors, of all religiouses, of everything. Almost half of them are divorced men. Doesn't it ring a bell? What, what other place in the world would you see something like this coming up and nobody will even, you know, they will ignore it. Not only ignore it, the funny thing is there was this Knesset member in one of the committees that I was participating, she said, a man committing suicide is also a brutal, uh, violent man. This is another proof that we are brutal and violent. Yeah, but you're doing it to yourself, so that's okay. If you shoot yourself, or you hang yourself, or you stab yourself, at least you're Last saving week, someone else. Last week, a divorced man that his ex did not allow him to see their baby lost his mind, yes. stabbed her, stole a car, and committed uh, suicide. He, he ran into a truck on the road and committed suicide. Now, what do they do, the, Israel, the smart Israeli government? In the papers, it was written, not that he, he committed suicide, he had an accident. All of a sudden, this is an accident. It's not a man running on purpose into a truck on the road. There was a father and son suicide. There was a father and son last week, wasn't there? Yeah. A father and a no, a girl, uh, no, the, a ba oh, baby girl. No, two weeks ago there was a, a father and, and a, another, for, yeah. A uh, the, the, the reason, uh, it's every two or three days we have a story like this. Oh, sometimes every two or three days we have a story like this. And listen, most of them are, I knew a few of them, but most of them are real good people. Not that big love. And, and, and I'm not talking about, uh, you know, uh, uh, street cleaners. I'm talking about doctors and lawyers and engineers and yeah, Merkaz Kesher is another wheel of that killing machine I was talking about. Center. The contact uh, center is just one other wheel in this killing machine I was talking about. A man we, uh, which has no criminal record, he's not abusing anybody, he's not a pedophile, nothing. Social worker decides he will see his kids once every two weeks for half an hour in the so in the contact center. Why? My judge told me one day on one of the sessions, she said, you will see your kids in the in the contact center. So I stood up and I said, you will see your kids in a contact center, not me. Uh, I said to her, dare you to send me to a contact center. Actually, Guy Shamir went to prison simply on the words that when the judge said blah 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 you can't look up he said you take care i'll take care of my kids and you need to watch yourself because you should take care of your own and he went to prison for threatening the judge yeah but lucky for us that uh, i mean uh, this this is one of the interesting story not because of that but because of the other thing because after that they took her off and, and put her into a different job because everybody understood that she went over the over the fence with this uh, with what she did to, to Guy. Did you see your children you, in the Merkaz Kesha? No. So no, I told the judge. You will see your children in a contact center. I'm not going to see my children. On what basis? Am I violent? Do I have a criminal record? Am I a pedophile? What? Why do I need to see my children in contact center? Especially that lucky for me, my first report from the social worker was remarkable. was real good. In Israel, it looks like a prison cell, even with bars on the on the win on the windows, so that nobody will escape from there. Dirty, very few toys, very yeah. shabby. 
one broken chair, maybe a couple of tables. Yeah. Some of them are just actually and 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 as outside. a father, of seeing your your kids there once every two weeks for half an hour, you're not allowed to hug them, you're not allowed to kiss them, you're not allowed to take pictures of them, nothing. You just have to sit five meters away from them and talk to them. That's and it. Not ask them how their life is because yeah. you could be trying to get more information right. than they prepared to allow you to. Have. And please understand all of these things that you are, you hear now. These are all small wheels in this big killing machine. These, these contact centers were invented about 50 years ago for a good purpose, so that even bad parents, I'm not talking about fathers because it could also be mothers, bad parents, those that rape their kids, that abuse their kids, that hit their kids or whatever, would still be able to see their kids because the kids need their parents no matter how bad they are. They are their parents. Okay? So they build this contact center to allow bad parents, really bad parents, still to be in contact with their kids. Nowadays, it's used as a punishment tool. Big killing machine ran by the government for one purpose, to crash people down. They don't want a Bastilla in Israel. Neve, how does this affect the children and what generation? I mean, it's been 20 years, okay, so these children that have gone through parental alienation and they've gone into institutions on Merkaz Kesha, there was a documentary last week about how they're all turning out. Well, I can tell my own experience. I was one of those kids myself. Uh, but the new generation of kids... They fucked up, it so fucked up your life. It fucks up uh, my life until the age of 27 when I went to that psychology treatment, when I understood that something is wrong with my life. It totally fucked up my life. Totally. Everything I did until the age of 27, except for a few things, they were all dead. What about today's kids on the drugs, the Ritalin? Same thing will happen to them. They're going on drugs, they're going on alcohol. They, they, it fucks up the... Look, the natural thing, the way God created us, kids are supposed to be raised at home, at their nest, at the most secure place. If you break that down, you break them down. They need to be protected until the age of 18. They need to be protected by both parents. How many kids have you met that have... Um, how many damaged kids have you met? Thousands. What does, what, do they all have... You know, because all the dads have the same core story, don't they? They're a little different, but they What's the call for the kids? Because it's real hard to find kids who've been through institutions and these things, you know? Um, no, you don't need to go to an right, institution I mean, to find somebody that was hurt. I mean, just go into a normal class today, you know, and there is, a, there is a school next door here. Go in there, take pictures of the children then. Half, half the children sitting in every class are divorced uh, children, okay? Take a picture of them, see how they behave. I mean, you don't need anything. You don't need psychologists to explain it. Just look at them, the way they behave. They're, they're violent. Inside, they're it? violent. They're doing everything bad possible. They, they. It's abnormal. There's no action that's yet been taken to actually force the right of the child to be applied in the court, and that is a legal right. Mm -hmm. uh, so a child, if the lawyers wake up to this, they can actually enforce this treaty because also about this treaty every other treaty no uh, no they uh, cannot enforce well, because, because yeah. israel when he, when israel signs treaties like this, this is a different they treaty. enter a special clause saying that even though they signed the treaty and everything the united nation or any other major body that they signed the treaty with cannot interfere with israel's internal affairs i'm gonna just correct you on one little thing the UNCRC was a treaty signed by everyone bar America and Somalia. Oof, wonder why. America for their federal laws in Somalia because they're just Somalia, you know? Um, and what the UNCRC treaty differs in is that it is an absolute agreement that the children's rights will be 
forced in by law of each country and each country has. Israel haven't and UNICEF have still been trying uh, for UNICEF, yeah, for 15 years to get an ombudsman for children. Now that is illegal, it's not a don't interfere with our domestics, they have to and they still haven't, nobody's making it happen, so we'll just set one up. Israel yeah. signed that we'll treaty something, you know, Israel something. signed that treaty something like 20 years ago, I think even, yeah, even more, but 25. 92, 95, something yeah. like that. And still ever since, them. ever since, nothing was changed in the Israeli uh, laws for children. We know there are no remedies, we know there's no independent ombudsman for anything here. Um, which means that if you can't get your remedy, you can't go to the UN, but we know you can't get your remedy. So that Israel always writes and say, we're transparent, we're good, we have competent courts, competent blah blahs. And of course, everyone in Israel knows that, that that's not true. But because it's rather writing officially always to say the people aren't complaining. I mean, what, what's your problem? We haven't had any complaints about anything. Right. They're all happy. <laughs> they but can't complain. They That's can't a different complain. story. The different story is where do you go? And this is why people think it's to be uh, a right. traitor or treason against the state because you actually find yourself having to go outside and ask a human being out there, do you, do, you, do you think you can help me? But your propaganda machine saying that you're already killing machines to other people. You know, you're having a Palestinian killing fest. So therefore, it serves you bloody right, you know. I mean, you're really trapped in a hell of a situation. Mm -hmm. um, because Israelis are not the same as Jews outside. No, I mean, Jews and Israelis totally are, different, are uh, different animals uh, yeah. altogether. You know, I know everyone says we're all Jews under the skin. No, it's not true. There's no such thing. The Jews true. outside do not. Have I have nothing clue. in common with the, with the typical American Jew. Nothing in common. I was yeah. there. I was living there. I met them. I was spent time with them. Nothing in common between them, me and them. Thousand dollar plates to raise money for the poor children of Israel. Yes. You know, from the twenty five billion dollars that comes in for the abuse. The other propaganda that's out there is that men are raping their children at the rate of like it's un unbelievable how many men are raping kids and the hundreds of thousands of women that are all in hospital for being beaten. Listen. Six, twelve times yeah. more dangerous for a child to live here, according to statistics. Yeah. It's six to t twelve times more dangerous to be a child in Israel than anywhere in the world because they've been raped right. and beaten by their parents right. or dads. So you're a bunch of pedophiles, basically. Right. How do you ever marry again if all you do is rape your own children? And you know what? <laughs> one other funny thing about this? They, they all make us look that bad pedophiles, violent, etc. Yeah. All but definitely. for example now I'm divorced I can find another woman she's probably going to be divorced too she has children I move in with her I raise her children nobody asked a question about it yeah I was dangerous to everybody when I was in court when I, during my own pro divorce process but now I'm living with another woman with other men's kids you can have and them. it's okay with everybody you can do that from the beginning I yeah. mean, you actually can pick up everyone's kids yeah. and take them and hold them and yeah. hug them and kiss them. And, 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 uh, and it's okay with, with everybody. Nobody cares about this. Only you run. Only you run. So actually you can be a kindergarten teacher, you can be uh, right. a child welfare person, and you can have 20 kids and hit, kiss and hug them all day. And this is five minutes after own. they describe you as the biggest monster on earth in court, in family court. Criminalized. So you understand that all of these stories they are not true, it's not a real thing, it's a balloon, full, full with air, nothing in it. But what's behind? Only money? It's, uh... no, no, money is part of the story. The, the, the thing is this killing machine. With this, they crash down the population of this country, Why? makes it easier for them to rule them. Because now they're building a new uh, 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 building for the for the uh, prime minister in Jerusalem, which is going to cost something like three hundred three million uh, three hundred million uh, shekels. That everybody here should be shouting against it. Nobody shouts against it. Nobody has the power to raise up and do something about it. It's not a democracy, though, is it? 
it doesn't even look like a democracy. Well, it does from outside. It doesn't. It doesn't. Only stupid people believe that there is democracy in Israel. There is no democracy in Israel. The right to protest. They go, oh, I see protests all day. Yeah, Cats. yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. The, the right to protest. First of all, in Israel, if you want to to point, to run actually. a protest, you need to get a license from the police. Okay. This is since 2011, by the way. It's got really tight since then. The, the, if you if you want to run a protest in Israel, you have to to um, get a license from the police. So of course the police will not give you a license in most cases. Not if it's a demonstration against the police. No, not. not. <laughs> in most cases, they will find the reason why you're not allowed to demonstrate. Okay. Yeah. Then they all they made an exception, which is really nice of them to to make them look good. They said if this is under 50 people, you don't have to ask for a license. Nice, right? Because most demonstrations are not more than 50 people. If it's a social okay. worker, it's under three. <laughs> it's under three. Two of you. But then I, I yeah. ran a lot of demonstrations like this. We were a group. I, I started a group that was uh, fighting, demonstrating against the judge of mine, Rivka Mekayes. So we had, uh, I think, about 100 demonstrations throughout the years. Every time we, w we came for a demonstration, most of them were done not far away from here in the court of uh, Kfar Saba. Every time we came there, they knew us. They knew our faces, they take photographs of us. There was a police car coming in, a chief of the police coming out, go away. I said, why? Because you're not allowed to demonstrate here. I said, yes, but like it's written in the police website, we are under 50 people here. We do not disturb anybody, we are not blocking the way, we are not uh, harming people, nothing. We're standing with our, with our flags and uh, signs. Uh, why do you... Because you disturb the peace of the neighbors. So I said to him, what neighbors? I mean, there is nothing around there. I mean, the next house is about 500 meters away from there. I said, what neighbors? No, you're disturbing the peace here. Go away. You're not going away? They bring in, you know, they have this special huge car that they deliver prisoners. They take you in. They hold you. They, they don't have a real reason to hold you. So what they do, they have... Secret again, files. it's... It's, a, it's not the it's secret a, file, is it? <laughs> <laughs> they, have this, they have this nice trick in Israel. Uh, they do not arrest you. They, uh, they have a name for it. I, I'm trying to think of uh, an English word. They, they keep you. It's, it's, on, it's on a daily basis for us. It's a normal thing. We, we are not ashamed anymore, you know, being men and you're not supposed to cry and everything. We cry now. I mean, what else can we do? Just cry.